Hey guys, I showed up early because I was late last night. So I wanted to be, I mean, 30 seconds, but still it's something. I uh, probably should bring this closer to my mouth and I, you know, my phobia, but I'm just going to start talking and I'm going to assume that you can hear me. And if you can't hear me, somebody's going to say it. Am I right? Lori, I see you in here, girl. Doodle queen. Okay. Gina, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, how are you guys this evening? I always think about you all throughout the day. I miss you guys. It's like, I can't, I want to do these every day. I hope that's not too many for you guys because I want to see you guys. I want to talk to you. So, um, how are we this evening? It's evening for me. Um, I cooked dinner. I've been uh, getting my office ready all day. The dogs and I have been doing that and uh, getting everything clean. You know how I like to vacuum and clean. I'm getting it all ready. So that's getting exciting. I really I talk about it every day. I want to get out of here, this office. Um, so I wanted to discuss something that Bo is in my lap. You guys can't see him. He's 70 pounds. He's not really in my lap, but he's laying his head in my lap. Can you pick your head up and show yourself? He's so cute. He's so cute, you guys. He's such a lovey bug. Um, Joanne, loving the hat. We get Aaron like three to four times a day. Getting your every day is an absolute treat. Thank you, Joanne. That's so nice. Thank you. And before I do get started tonight, I also just want to say thank you again. Uh, I... I'm a, I'm an early bird when I go to bed. I get up early, but I, I go to bed early. I, I don't think I went to bed until like two o'clock in the morning last night. One, I was messaging with you guys, but two, I was crazy reeling about just you guys sending me money and being so supportive. And I just was, I was just buzzing. I was like, I can't believe people did that. Tina, <laughs> thank you for this, by the way. Tina talks $10. You're so nice. Thank you. Leah is suing Scientology and David. Yes. Yes, girl. Aren't that's amazing. I love Leah. I think she's such a warrior and she'll, she'll never quit. And I just love that. Thank you for your, for your money. That was so nice. Thank you. And thank you last night, everybody for, uh, giving me donating, however you want to put it. Thank you for that. Um, so I'm getting my office ready. I spent most of the day doing that. I did some laundry, cooked dinner early, and um, wanted to jump on and talk to you guys. We kind of touched on it last night, but I've been talking to a few people today via messenger about this subject, and we kind of touched on it, but I wanted to go into further detail and kind of get your guys' opinion, feedback, you know, just kind of tips on what, how you handle this. So I just turned 39, and... This is something that probably, there's a lot of things I'm seeing at this point that I didn't see before, if that makes sense. Like six months ago, I was a Scientologist. Now I'm not. There's so many years of layers with that, as you know. And I just, I just wonder, there's so many things daily that I'm like, whoa, whoa, like I'm learning different things. But I wonder how you guys take criticism or not even so much criticism, but like love, just wanting, oh my God, is that Aaron? Oh my God. Our sweet little bald Aaron. He's our little pistachio, our little bald pistachios in the chat. You guys, he gave me $10 Aaron. Oh, don't we love Aaron? Oh my God. He's so cute. What a baby angel. Thank you, Aaron. I wish we were together. Wish we were on here together. Aaron and I are going to do a live tomorrow. We just don't know when. Okay. Good night. Off to bed. Good night. We love you very much. Sleep tight. Get all nuzzled in there with your pillow, you little pistachio. Okay. So anyway, everyone say good night to Aaron. Um, so what was I saying? Not, I just want to discuss, I really want to discuss this with you guys. I want to have an open talk about it. Taking 
like abs not absorbing other people's maybe energies. Is that a good way of putting it? Like taking something and being okay with it. That's why I titled this learning, learn to live with being uncomfortable. I have never been okay with somebody's bad vibe and it could be just a quiet bad vibe or it could be something somebody says or even somebody making a face, a sound. I tend to, um, what would you, what, what word would I say? Internalize that. Um, let's see what Melanie says. Honestly, it depends who the criticism comes from. Someone I respect, I reflect. Someone I don't, I shrug it off. Bingo. That is, oh my God, I feel like I have to sneeze. Or do, do you sneeze on camera? Okay, it's doing that weird thing where it kind of feels like it's going to pass. It did. It passed. That's so weird. That only happens to me very rare, very, not very often. Okay. Melanie, you kind of hit that on the head for me. I'm trying to learn to not take anything personally from someone I don't value in the first place. And I feel like that's what you're telling me. So in my life, I never understood what this Rotten Ralph says, Reese, are you on the spectrum? This is going to sound stupid, but coming from Scientology, we don't use that talk. I don't know what on the spectrum truly means. And I've never looked it up. Um, so I, I can't, if you want to give me like a definition of that, Ralph, I'm embarrassed to say that, but I kind of touched on this last night. I don't know what a lot of things, what that pertains to on the spectrum. Um, KMB 12750311. All right. Thank you for that. Your courage is so spectacular. Thank you. I hope you find beauty everywhere you open your eyes. Mm -hmm. I try to treat others the way I want to be treated. Sometimes it pays off. Let negativity roll off your back. I love that. And you're absolutely correct. But uh, thank you, Jennifer. Love the hat, the glasses and hat. Thank you. As you guys know, I have a ton of different pairs of glasses. I don't always wear these because they're kind of bold and out there. And But I think they're fun for summer. And as far as the hat goes, she's my favorite designer. Her name is Claire V. And I pretty much carry all of her bags. And now she kind of dabbles with hats and um, some clothes and I some jewelry. And I've been loving Claire V out of Los Angeles. She makes everything in L.A probably for 15 years now. I liked her way before she was cool. Everybody knows who she is now, but I liked her way back when. It makes it special. Um, oh, Courtney Platt, my first super chat. <gasps> Thanks for the encouragement today. My biggest fear is the trolls loving you. Oh my God. Thank you, Courtney. Oh my gosh. You guys are amazing. Thank you. And I totally agree with you on this. Your biggest fear is the trolls. I don't know how else to put this, but like my mom is a good example. Well, there's a bunch of cute kids outside my front door, front house, front of the house. There we go. Um, my mom has always done this to me my whole life and it drives me nuts. Okay. I'm just going to tell you if I have a problem, I, let me just interrupt myself real quick, Jackie, because that is important. Aaron, get out of here before the cooter chat starts. He already left. He was in and out for that purpose. He's not comfortable. He's not comfortable. So he just jumped in and out. But we will get to the cooter talk, Jackie. Don't worry. Um, my mom has always said, oh, well, just let it go, Reese. Just let it go. It, it drives my sister and I crazy because it's kind of almost like, what is that like? It's, it's, it really kind of triggers me because it's like, Hmm. If I could, I would. So by you telling me to like calm down or let it go, I'm try like, I'm already trying to learn that and like unlearn my past shit that was in the church of Scientology. So it's like, please give me some time. I'm trying to let it go, but it's not easy to let things go. And I bet you guys can relate to that. It's not easy. Now there are people who naturally do just let shit roll off. I'm, I've never been that way. And okay. On the spectrum has to do with autism. And again, I'm not really clear on what autism, the ins and outs of autism, because again, in Scientology, there is no such thing. So I have a hard time with anything in that area. Cause I just don't know. I'm not informed or educated on it. 
Um, so I just, um, I wanted to touch on that and see like, maybe if you guys had any good examples of how you learned to work through that, I would say that I was thinking about it today when I like, this is another reason I like to clean and play music and kind of get a vibe going because I get into like deep thoughts on my own on things. And, um, Carrie, Carrie and I were talking today. That's my friend. I used to work with her. Carrie Schultz, you are not autistic Reese. I don't know. I don't know what the symptoms of autism are, to be honest. But anyway, I was in this vibe today. And when I get to cleaning and I, I just kind of get into my own mode, I'm sure you, a lot of you do this. And I start to really kind of go into deep thinking. It's just like the talks I have with you guys. This is how my head works all the time. I don't like small talk. I like to get into the realness of things and try to solve some issues while we're doing it. It's not just to talk on it because every time I talk about it, I go, oh, I always realize something. So it's helpful. That's maybe just how I cope and process. I don't know, but you guys seem to not mind it. Um, so I was thinking about it and in Scientology, for me anyway, I can speak about me, okay? From a very young age, I would say I was a much, very much an introvert, which you're gonna go, ha ha, no you're not, that's funny. Yes, yes I am, and I was, because they're mean. I mean, they're, they're fairly harsh. My father was very harsh. My dad was calling me fat at a very young age and saying harsh things. He would call me a bank or a down stat, and those two both pretty much mean just you're a bad person. Um, you're being irrational and you need to kind of get yourself together. And from as early as I can remember, which may be like four is my earliest memory, he was saying those things to me. Now, I'm not telling you this so you can go, oh, poor Reese. I'm telling you this so that you can kind of see the timeline of why to this day. I mean, I can remember my dad saying those things to me and me being just like, oh, like I would just shrink and I would feel small. And so to this day, when people say things that are negative, I get the same kind of closed up, like, I don't know how to deal with it in my mind feeling. Well, now that I'm out of Scientology and I have a whole new beautiful way of like looking at things, I'm really trying to change that. Not because I have to, but because I want to. Everything is different looking to me, everything. The world is so different, I can't explain it. Amy, thank you, babe. What a nice, sweet super sticker, thank you. I look at things just so much more brightly, especially since starting this channel, because I see how kind people truly are. You guys have no idea how horrible they teach us that the world is out there outside of the church. And that is the truth, that people are awful, people are criminals, people just want to take stuff from you. People are, um, they smile with a knife behind their back. That's what we're taught. And only to trust basically other Scientologists. Like, don't go there with WOGs because they're not to be trusted. Um, Courtney Platt, a friend taught me to assume positive intent. I try to remember that that's how I try to overcome hurt feelings. I like that. See, this is why I wanted to have a discussion on tonight. Thank you for that. Thank you for the super chat. That was very, very kind. Um, and that's exactly what I mean. But I really do mean in the church, we are not to uh, converse, I guess would be the word, with outsiders as much as possible, right? Like you're going to talk to a cashier somewhere. You're going to have a waitress somewhere. You're going to maybe have a job somewhere where you work with a bunch of non-Scientologists. That's fine. But just don't get too heavy with them because they're uh, not to be trusted. So I always knew that was wrong, but I followed it anyway. And now, um, ugh, Amy... Our executive director used to call people down sat shit for brains. Yeah, that sounds right on point. That makes total sense. I'm sure my dad called me that many times. Okay, Michelle, my dad was like that too. And I remember the words vividly. I am 54 and it still triggers me. I am so sorry. Um, see, you're in good company though. I mean, that's all I can say is we really love each other in this group. We understand and respect each other. 
And that's what I love, that you guys are truly my friends and we can have a conversation about it. And hopefully by the end of this conversation, we all go to bed or go to work or whatever time zone you're in going, I feel better about that. That's how I want to end every chat with, wow, we all realize something. Let's go on with our lives and to peel another layer off of hurt or pain or, or something that we can replace it with something positive. That's truly the way I'm trying to live my fucking life. I don't want to be around anything negative anymore. I realize how much negativity I was in for so long that I seriously am like turning away at shit. I'm like, I don't want to be around it. There's my Lisa Marshbanks. Oh, Reese, look how freaking cute you are. You little sugar bean. Can't wait for the fashion video. That's right. We were going to talk about that, weren't we? Uh, Lisa and I talked about, thank you, by the way, for the super chat. Lisa and I talked about fashion. She loves fashion. I love fashion. Sometime we may touch on that. And why wouldn't we? We talk about cooters and everything else. Speaking of cooters, uh, a lot of you had checked in on me today. As you know, uh, you marked on your calendars that yesterday Shark Week started. I had raging cramps. Uh, day one's always the worst. Day two is a little better. A lot of you checked in. My fallopian tubes and my uterus are doing better today, I would say. Um, they're more mild is the word they kind of tried to use when I checked in on them. And uh, we still required Advil, but uh, they weren't tugging at me as much today. I got to get some work done and I didn't have to take a nap and I was in better spirits. So thank you for checking on the uterus. Let's see. I think Pembroke Love, you had this question maybe yesterday. It was in another chat and I didn't get to answer it. Question. How do they view people like you who marry outside of the church? Um, it's frowned upon. It's not like you, you're told you can't. I would probably be told I couldn't if I were in, on staff. I bet that would be a different rule. Um, because I was a public, um, it's frowned upon for sure. And as long as you bring the new person that you're marrying in and get them on services and started on the bridge... Um, you're kind of forgiven. So, uh, Jeff, they were all over Jeff when Jeff and I started dating. I took Jeff with me to the ideal org grand opening, um, in Kansas city. And, uh, they definitely tried to like reg, which means like sell him, get him in. Uh, Brenda told me various times you need to bring him in. You need to find his ruin. We need to find his ruin. Finding someone's ruin is like finding one of the most painful things in their life, whether it be a loss or an accident or something, and really bring it up so that you get them all flustered. And then you can go, well, Scientology can help you with that. And they go, oh, wow, please, I'll do anything to get the pain away from this. It's really fucking sick. So Brenda, many times, my mother-in-law would be like, you need to bring Jeff in. We need to get him in. We need to get him on course. They wanted to get him in session so bad. So that's kind of to answer your question. As long as you get that new person that you're marrying on the bridge, you're forgiven. If not, you're kind of an outcast, which I was. Michelle Kelly, what a sweet pea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew Humphreys in. Uh, uh, let's see. You and Oh No Nora need to do a live together. I need to meet this Nora. I really want to meet her. So yes, we could totally do a live. I'd like to do a live with anybody. I think that's great. Hey, Goldie's in. Hey, Goldie. Um, Tess V. I'd say it should be Reese, Nora, and Mark Headley, a trio of funny, crazy, funny chair chat. Cute. I'd love to. I don't know if they would love to with me, but I would love to. I'm pretty new on the scene, so they probably have no idea who I am. Um, anyway, uh, Lori, where is it? I saw your comment, Lori. Oh, I'm a terrible friend. I didn't check in on your uterus. Uh, you're not a terrible friend. It's perfectly okay. I will have another period next month. So you can always check in. I'm good till menopause. And I think my mom said she was in her late fifties and I'm 39. So Lori, you've got, you've got plenty, plenty of time to mark your calendar. Let's see. Yesterday was the first I'm like clockwork. So just check around the 1st of September, Labor Day-ish, and see how, how my uterus is feeling, how Penelope's doing, my fallopians. We'll see. We'll see. I'm, I would guess it will be the same next month. It's the same every month, and it's a house of fucking horrors. Um, 
so I just really wanted to discuss this. And then, of course, we'll have our, I'm going to scoot it up in this god-awful chair. I can't wait to get my new chair, you guys. I really want to get it bad. I hate this chair. I don't know how Jeff does it. It's awful. Um, I wanted to talk about the subject at hand, but then, of course, we're going to spin off into other things like we always do. And I'm glad that you guys are here for that. Um, and feel free to vote on a subject or, again, ask me questions or ask each other questions. You know, whatever whatever you feel is right in your heart this evening is what I, I feel is right also in mine. Um, just not absorbing, not absorbing shitty vibes from people. I don't know what word to use other than vibe, but it's not, it's more than a vibe because, you know, people say shitty things. People do shitty things. People do things. Um, I went to the UPS store the other day and this lady like made a point to elevator eye me. She like looked me up and down with a scowly face. When people do stuff like that, I really, it like makes me introvert and I've got to learn to one, live with that uncomfortable. And no, it's not me. I probably look like somebody she hates or maybe, you know, sometimes the hat, it triggers people. I don't know, but I have to learn that it's okay that somebody's in a bad mood and doesn't want to mess around. I mean, it's, I, I really, really absorb it. I've got to learn to not let it sink in. Bev's playlist. What did Jeff think about trying to be brought into the Church of Scientology? So Jeff was very open-minded. And at the time when I brought him, I was a huge Scientologist. So of course I wasn't like, I'm going to bring you into this church and uh, it sucks and we're undercover. No, I was, I was, a I was a proud Scientologist. So Jeff was, went along with Jeff, first of all, was like anything and everything. Like if I, if I was like, let's go here. He was like, yes, ma'am. Jeff had the hots for me. Hardcore. He still does. You guys, it really gets me going. I still get gooseys. I get gooseys. I still get the butterflies. Um, but Jeff was like, I was like, we're going to go to the church of Scientology's grand opening. And he was like, just tell me what you want me to wear. I mean, Jeff was like a puppy. I mean, we just hit it off right away. There was a lot of chemistry and uh, definitely, uh, definitely the bone phone was ringing and uh, picked up right away, picked that thing up right away. And I've never regretted it. I've never had regrets about it. It was everything I wanted it to be. And it still is. And uh, he likes to get in it. And I don't, I don't blame him and I don't ever stop him. Um, let's see, Melissa, Reese, when people give me the stink eye, I look them dead in the face and say, oh my God, did you just fart? <laughs> they back off real quick. That's one way to live your life. That's not terrible. I don't mind that. Um, I mean, I don't, I try not to, to say anything anymore these days, but like I have been known if I have like a really shitty person in customer service, it's rude to me. I'll just leave and be like, Okay, well, I hope you have a better day. You know, I hope you fucking turn that frown upside down, frowny. I try not to be as rude as I used to be, and I'm much better at it. And I, I think I need to give myself more credit. I am getting better at this. Every day that passes, and every day that passes, especially now that I have a channel and I can, like, really, I feel like I'm, we're having a group therapy. Like, we're really doing this. I, I just feel better every day. I just feel like a weight is lifted every day with you guys. So I need to give myself more credit. I'm doing better in the human world. Oh. What was this? <laughs> Gina Marie, have you had any paranormal experiences? Story time. Um, yes, many, many, many. My mom, uh, is really like, she really, I would say pulls that in. I don't know what other words to use. It's a Scientology term, but my mom is definitely like all about that. Um, I just have, I just sense stuff. So yes, I was just in Eureka Springs and it's like a super haunted town. And we went to the, I think it's one of the most haunted hotels in the United States, the Crescent hotel. 
And uh, yes, I, I saw things. I felt things. There's a hotel outside of Kansas City, Jeff and I stayed at that's super haunted. It's called the Elms. And um, <laughs> my luggage was like upside down every time I left the room and came back. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, I don't love that, but I also try to think of ghosts or whatever they are as um, I feel sorry for them. Like, I don't ever get like this evil intention, like ghosts are scary. I get this kind of sadness off of them. Like I'm lost. Help me. That's kind of how I feel. And sometimes I do feel things passing through my house or I don't know. I just get vibes sometimes. And I just think that wasn't me. There's somebody around now I get that less and less now that Fred hangs around me all the time. I do feel protected by him. Like if there was a bad vibe, I feel like Fred kind of keeps it away. I could be wrong, but I feel that way. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny actually about the Crescent. So we took the ghost tour there. This is a few weeks ago. We went for my birthday. We took the ghost tour there and the, the tour guide has one of those beep, 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 beep things that like picks up energy or heat or some shit. I don't know, whatever it is, it goes off. And we were in, in front of one of the hotel rooms. It was room 218. That's Michael's room. And he's a ghost that loves the ladies. Okay. Like loves the ladies. And she was like, it's booked for like two years straight. You can't even get a room in this room. Like he messes with your underwear. He'll like climb into bed with you. I'm like, oh, that's, that sounds like a room I really want to have. Um, so she's like, let me, let me hand one of this to the ladies because it'll go off around a lady. Like he will, okay. EMF meter. Uh, it'll go off around the ladies. Like watch, it'll go off. And I'm holding this thing and it never went off. And I'm thinking, okay, either Fred is like back the fuck off. Cause Fred would do that. Fred would be like, uh, uh then not with my girl. No, no, you're not, you're not getting a look or I'm just ugly. So I couldn't decide. I was like, okay, haha, my husband's either protecting me, which I hope I feel like I'm in a cocoon right now, or I'm just ugly. And Michael had no fucking attraction to me at all. That ghost was like, uh, uh, she's not cute. I'm not into her. Give it to a different person. So I couldn't decide. And, uh, I gotta be honest. I was a little hurt feelings. I had some hurt feelings that the ghost that flirts with every woman didn't flirt with me. I was a little sad about that. Um, so that didn't happen that night, but that's my ghost story. Um, and I don't know. I just, that's kind of that, that particular Gertrude, where are you going? What are you doing? Are you upset? Gertie got upset today. Something happened today and she is really, really upset with me and she, I'm, I'm being serious. Come here, baby. It's okay. It's okay. Nobody's upset with you. It's okay. Nobody's upset. So Gertie and I were in the basement cleaning out my new office. And I'm going through stuff. And I'm sitting in a chair going through things in a box. And Bo, our big, huge poodle, comes over. And Gertie hates him. She doesn't like him at all. And he comes over and he gets too close and she starts like growling and showing teeth. And then she, she bites at him and she does it all the time. And I hate it. I wish she wouldn't do it, but he never bites back. And I mean, I always assume it's like, what, she's six, seven pounds. How much damage is she going to do? So she bites at him and I'm like, stop that. And she does it again. And I put my hand in front of her to grab something I was going for. And she bit my hand and it broke the skin and it hurt. And I was shocked. And I was like, Gertie, I wasn't mad at her. I didn't scold her. I just was like, whoa. And then she started shaking and she knew, she knew she had done that to me. And I knew she felt terrible and so bad that she's been weird all afternoon since I couldn't even hardly get her to eat dinner. I had to really coax her to eat dinner and it was sad. And I felt sorry for her. everybody forgives you. Oh, you want me to kiss you? Everybody. For oh, okay. Okay. Oh, again, she's a little queen. Everybody forgives you, honey. I'm not upset with you at all about it. I'm not upset with you at all. Golly, so sensitive, you guys. It's unreal how sensitive. Um, honey, nobody's upset. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, 
I mean, we don't have to stay on forever, guys. And it's it may be boring already. I just really wanted to touch on that. I wanted to discuss what you guys maybe thought or do in a situation where somebody has somebody has just bad vibes or is rude or says something rude. And I just wondered, like, what's a good way to not absorb that and truly let it roll off? Like, just let it roll off. My, Like I said, my mom all the time is like, let it go. I just hate it when people say that. It really bothers me because I just think, honey, it's okay. She looks so sad. I don't know what to do about it. Um, when someone says, let it go, I just think, how do you do that? It's like saying, don't, don't be mad. Punky, punky, honey. You're okay. It's okay. Um, let's see. Yeah. That's just Diana. You have to talk it out with friends like you're doing. I agree. That's why I thought we'll, we'll all discuss it this evening and, um, and just see, I want to get, I want to get feedback on what you guys think about that. Um, and I always think it's weird when somebody is especially rude when they're in the service industry. Like I get it. People have bad days. Don't get me wrong. That's I've, I've had a job before and I've been in a bad mood. So I understand, but like people who actually buy baby, please, please understand. I'm not upset. Okay. Um, I get it. People have bad days and I'm forgiving of that, but people who you can tell like really hate their jobs and they're rude to people and they just like target people. I just think don't, ah, I don't know what to say about that. I just think it's, it's a bizarre, it's a bizarre way of doing things. And, and you know what though, you know, that saying, you don't know, what is it like? You don't know what somebody else is going through. That is a fact. And since I've lost Fred and had bad times in my life, although I don't feel like my Fred loss or like any of those things, I don't, I'm not mean to people though about that. I just handle it differently. I don't know. I, I'm, I mope and I'm sad, but I don't like take out and get angry at strangers. That's just not how I cope with things. So when people do that, I don't know. I just think there's a better path here. Figure it the fuck out. Gina Marie, when people rattle me, sometimes I breathe deeply and focus on how my breathing feels. And that helps me to feel a little more centered in my own body and feel less rattled and upset. I love that. You know, that's kind of a thing too. I've been thinking about breathing and like taking deep breaths and like just chill out. Like it doesn't, I'm also being a Scientologist and we've talked about this. It's like, boom, 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 get it done, get it done, get it done. Don't sit down. You don't have time. I'm also trying to just go, it's okay if this doesn't get done because in the Scientology world, it is not okay. And you will be written the F up if something doesn't get done. So I'm really trying to like step back, breathe deep. It's okay. You're not in Scientology anymore. Nobody's going to write me up. Nobody's going to make me stay here until three in the morning and get done because that happens too. Um, you often will be at the org until two or three in the morning. If you don't get your shit done, they don't let you leave. So, <laughs> that's hilarious. I breathe deeply in between cussing and yelling. Yeah, you don't want to give yourself a heart attack for sure. If you're going to cuss and yell, make sure you're getting your breaths in. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Susan Miller, yeah. Nope, Jeff won't write you up. Exactly. But it is true that I still have like, almost, what would you call that? Like PTSD about it. Like I still feel like, oh my God, I have to get this done. Like to me in my mind, I'm like, there's a deadline. There isn't a deadline or there's a, like, you got to meet your quota. And that's truly like still, still built in, which again, I'm giving myself a little bit of grace there and going, it's only been six months. Um, chill out. It's okay. Burke, in the name of love. Uh, oh, she's uh, uh, saying something to someone else, but I thought it looked interesting. Yes, some people don't have their own healthy coping and venting mechanisms, so they just pass it on and belittle others. They do. And I'm trying to learn more that that reflects on them and not so much me. Like, stop being sad that somebody that you totally don't know 
just said something that hurts your feelings. It shouldn't hurt your feelings, you guys. Like, I feel like this shouldn't, we shouldn't let it get that far. Like, I don't know you, you're a stranger. I don't value your opinion in the first place, right? Doxy mom, thank you. That's so nice. Thank you for that super chat. Um, Denise Brown, you are so refreshing. Thank you. I feel like I'm boring you guys tonight. I mean, I didn't have that much of a topic, which I normally don't, but I just, I just really struggle with that. That is one thing. There's several things that I like kind of highlight for me in my mind that I'm like, I need to work on these things. I want to be a better person. I want to grow out of that. And that's a big one for me. That's a big one. And I think it would help my self-confidence. I've very low confidence, very low confidence. That may not seem accurate because I'm on here talking to you guys, but it's the truth. I feel very uncomfortable in most situations because I think I'm so uneducated. Um, I'm embarrassed about that all the time. And I know I can fix it. I know it's not like I'm stuck in this boat. I know I can get educated, but I'm too embarrassed to. I don't feel smart enough to go take the steps to do it. And let's be honest, I don't want to, guys. I'm 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 not motivated to do it. I'm just complaining. I'm just bitching about it. I my whole life when I'm around non-scientologists, I would always feel intimidated because um I didn't know anything besides L. Ron Hubbard. That's kind of a weird place to be in if you really think about that for a minute. I didn't know anything other than LRH which is great when you're in the church, they, they're real proud of that. You know, when you know, the more LRH, you know, the, the, the more trained you are and admired you are. Nobody gives a shit what you know outside of the church. So when I'd be in outside of the church settings and situations, oh my God, I was so embarrassed. When I, um, when I met Jeff and we started dating after, after Fred died, we started dating at a certain point. Um, Jeff went to college. He's a software developer. Okay. To me, I'm like, wow, I would think you have to be smart to be able to write code. He went to college for that. He has degrees for that. He owns his own company. All of those things, people who are accomplished, I get more, I shrink more and more around them because I just am embarrassed. I'm like, I have accomplished nothing. Literally. I haven't accomplished anything. Um, I'm a Scientologist. We don't accomplish shit. So, and when I taught, like met Jeff's extended family, his mom, everybody's super educated. And I think that's common in the real world, but people put importance on that. And when they bring that up, I would always get so embarrassed. They'd be like, so what, what, where did you go to college? And it's like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed about this. Like, please don't ask me that. I would shrink. I still do. I'm just embarrassed. Rob, look at Rob giving us money. Oh, what an angel. What a little Warren Buffett. How did I not, you know, you were monetized. Really enjoying your content and the space you create. Thank you, Rob. We love your space too. We love the space you create as well, Rob. Don't feel, don't feel like this is all about me. It's also about you. Thank you for that. Um, so it's just... Let's see what Lisa says. My former career put me in the space with a bunch of educated people all the time. I often got busted by my lack of education. Totally get that feeling. You are doing, doing great things now. Thank you. I cried a lot today. I feel like I'm going to start crying. Um, thank you for this also. You raised an awesome son, a, a gigantic accomplishment. I appreciate that, you guys, but I don't feel that way most of the time. I kind of feel like I did my best, but it could have been better. So I just, let's see what this says. <clears throat> Jay Rich, you've accomplished a lot. You have a family, created a home, got out of Scientology, have a YouTube channel, et cetera. Reese, you little ginger snap, are educated in different ways. Thank you for that. Someone said to me once, I think we talked about this the other night. Someone said, you just have different gifts. And that really made an impact on me. I was like, that's a good way to look at things because instead of comparing, it really is a good way to go. You shine in other ways. We're not all the same. 
and we don't, we're not meant to be, it's okay. I think I just go in a million different directions being out of the church and being totally away from any Scientologist that now I'm only around non-Scientologists, which wasn't the case in life. It's kind of a shock to the system. That's all. And so I try to fit in as much as I can. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how to fit in yet. And I feel weird around people. And I just feel like I stand out in a bad way. Carrie, my friend says a degree or lack of does not define you whatsoever. You're right. I know. But being in the real world, I feel like it does. And people talk about it a lot and I get embarrassed. Samina. Oh my God. Thank you. Oh my God. Not much, but with all good intentions for helping you set up your office, you are awesome. Be proud. Thank you guys. Thank you for, you don't have to send me money. Thank you. That's very kind. I feel weird and awkward. Like I don't, again, I don't even know how to use Uber Eats. So, or I don't know how to call an Uber. So I just appreciate you guys thinking enough that you want to give me money. I just think that you're, that's so special. Thank you. I don't know that didn't come out right, but I think you guys know me well enough to know what I was trying to say. Reese, you kept your son out of Scientology. One of the best gifts you could have given him. Okay. That's true. I do definitely agree with you on that. I don't know what I'm trying to say. You guys, I just, it's really, it's really hard to be booted out of this organization when I was under their umbrella for so long and literally just the door slammed in my face. And now I'm out in the real world with all of you and I love it. And it's overwhelming how much it's changed my life in the last week since I started this channel and like seeing what true love really is with human beings and kindness and caring is so incredible to me. It means more than any dollar amount or anything relationships are where it's at. That's the truth. It just is. And so I'm learning that every day. I, that's why I keep coming on here. I keep thinking, I'm not going to do a live today. They don't want to see me again. They don't need to hear me again. We can do one or two a week and that's enough. For me, it's not. I'm addicted to you guys. Like This is so therapeutic. The support, the love, the kindness, the caring, it's all so real and I've never really felt it before. So it's like, I can't help myself. I can't, I have to get on here. Even if there's 10 people watching, it just means that much to me. It means so much to me. So thank you for being with me tonight. Yeah, Jay Rich. Sometimes it's not about understanding, but it's just talking and sharing. Absolutely. I totally agree. It's, it's listening. It's not even understanding all the time. Like you just said, it's just even listening. Um, and I appreciate you guys doing that. And it means really seriously so much to me because oftentimes it's just me and Gertie and kid. Kid is here on the floor next to me, by the way. And they're such good listeners. Bo really likes to listen to my stories, but I don't know. Gertie's extremely judgmental and she gives me a lot of fucking side eye. And I'm like, I just told you a whole story and you're really giving me that side eye. It's hurtful. It's hurtful. But when you were born next to the Lord in a manger, I guess you're going to have higher standards. And she was. She was born right there under the, the stars and whatnot in a manger. So that's her birth story. Wendy, love Aaron, and he's so not going to bed. Actually, I think he is. I got I got off the phone with him right before I got on, and he was like, I'm, I've gotten a really good night's sleep the last three days. And he was like, I'm going to keep that up. Good night. And I was like, okay. Good. He needs it. Sleep is important. I'm a big pusher of sleep. I have always been that way with Huxley. Always. Like I always tell him like sleep, you do a lot of healing in your sleep. It's very, very necessary. Um, oh my God. I know side eye from pets is the worst. Nothing feels so judgy as that. Oh, it's, I mean, it's a real damn thing. I will tell Gertie my stories and sometimes she's supportive, but most of the time she's like, do better. I'm like, what the, that's a seven pounds of a lot of sass. Uh, I will do better. Thank you. I think thanks for the boost, Gert. Good God. Angela throws money at the phone. Take my money. You little rosebud. We love you. Thank you. Glow worm. <laughs> so sweet. You guys are so nice. I just really love you guys. 
Aw, TMB. Yay, I caught a live. Go Reese's Rebel Monkeys. Cute. I love that. And thank you for that, by the way. Oh, God, I know. Michelle Kelly. Or when they turn away, when you try to kiss them. Gert does that shit to me all the time. Bo, not so much. Again, he's just like goofy and silly. And he's just like a big love. And he does not judge me. And again, he's like, Mom, I listen to your stories. I like your stories. And uh, Gertie, not so much. Not so much. She's cute, but she's really judgmental. Um. <laughs> rmj70 i tell my cat stuff side eye tail twitch walk away butthole view straight up cat butt yeah again i get that not so much with kid cats i've had in the past kid kid sticks around kid listens for the story and she doesn't really get as judgy as other cats i've had which is nice which is nice but kid are you going to join and say hello this evening or are you just going to sit there all right well, whenever you decide. Um, let's see what this says. Noel, the more I hear about Scientology, the more it seems similar to the cult I grew up in. The window dressing is different, but the basics are the same. I'm sure. I'm sure that's true. And it really does shape who you are as a person. I That's the other thing I think about with Huxley all the time. I'm like, I hope I, I second guess myself all the time. I'm like, I hope I did this right. I hope I said that right. Did I respond to that correctly? Because it really makes a damn difference. I know this because of how I was raised. Um, the coldness and just how ugly my father was to me and my sisters, uh, I think made a huge difference. And I'm glad that I don't feel I grew up cold and ugly. I know I'm not. I don't feel like I'm cold hearted toward people. I want to help people for sure more than now, more than ever. And I want to help myself. And I feel like it's possible to do both. I feel like this group we're in right now, we can do both. It can be accomplished. Duchess Diana and Gertie is judging herself hard tonight for biting you earlier. I know she is, she feels bad. And I've told her over and over it was an accident and it's okay, but it was the first time that's happened. And I got her in 2016. I've had her for a long time and it was just an accident, but God, it was crazy how much that hurt. It was wild. Um, so is there anything else that we want to talk about while we're here? We covered my uterus and fallopian tubes. Things are, things are looking a little better today. Um, we covered the, the judgmental stuff and accepting criticism. Um, you guys had some Scientology questions. Courtney Platt. That's cute. I'm in Northern Idaho, but the next time my husband travels to KC area, I'll be go, I'll be sure to go and reach out. I love Mexican. Do it. Don't be, don't be just saying that you need to, you need to follow through with that. Um, let's see. What is this question? The nurse who loved me. Hey Reese. What did you expect from the YouTube community when Aaron first had you on? Did you think people would be nice or not so much? Um, I think I was nervous. I think P I was, I mean, I was very, the very first time when I actually shared my story, um, that was public very first time I was terrified and I was worried that people were going to be like judgmental and, maybe name calling or just because again, that's kind of how we're told people are in the church. So I think I was more worried that I wasn't going to feel support. I was going to feel attacked and I've never once felt attacked. Not once. You guys have been amazing. I mean, seriously, every day, every day I'm blown away. Glad you're not, you're here. Not you're late, but here, let's see, Susan Miller, how do folk in the Sea Org ever find time to date or marry? So in the Sea Org, you um, have to, you cannot date, you have to get married. There's no dating allowed. So that's why people will meet and like get married in a couple of days and then get divorced in a month. I know people in the Sea Org who are 25 and they've been married three times and divorced because you can't have sex, you can't date, you can't get to know anybody without marrying them. What a stupid, crazy concept to me. That's just crazy. I mean, to me, the bone phone, seriously, you have to have chemistry there. 
who would marry someone and then find out like there is no chemistry? I guess that's why you get divorced. Uh, hello again. I don't know how to say your name. It is not the same, but I come from an abusive relationship and it has me second, has me second guessing all I do and I'm lonely. So I feel I understand how you feel. By the way, I am from Mexico. I can send recipes. Please send those. And I'm so sorry for that. Um, you guys, abusive relationships are no joke too. I mean, I, let's not, let's not play that down either. That is similar to being in a cult. I mean, depending on how abusive and narcissistic people can be, uh, holy shit. That is serious just as much. People can be so ugly. Lady BB. Hi, Relatable Reese. Look how cute you are with the hat and great glasses. Thank you. I was not, I wasn't sure about these. You guys, I'm going to tell you. Aaron, the other day, we were getting ready to go live. And we were both on the camera. And he goes, ha, 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 ha. You know, Aaron's hilarious laugh. Ha, 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 ha. He goes, those glasses are hilarious. You should wear them for the chat. And I was like, I was going to, but never mind. Like, I don't know if he thought they were like a prop or a joke. I was like, Aaron, this is just one of my 75 pairs of glasses. I literally went and changed them. I was like, uh, never mind. I'm not going to wear them. They are loud. They're a big, bright, bold white. But I, I just wear these in the summer. This is one of my summer pairs of glasses. I don't know. <laughs> Aaron, he's hilarious. He's so funny. Um. Yeah, totally. Nurse who loved me. Lonely is the worst feeling. Yes, it is. It is. It's the reason for a lot of sad, sad events that occur in the world, I think. Loneliness. Um, going rogue. I am also healing from a similar situation to the Jane Doe's. Mm. That's what threw me to watch all the Danny Masterson coverage and got hooked. Wow. Yeah. Understood. Sorry to hear that. Tammy, uh, question, how did you meet Aaron? I met Aaron through the Aftermath Foundation. I reached out to Aaron when I watched the show, the Netflix show, and I thought, oh my gosh, there's a foundation for people like me. So I just called the number and I left a voicemail and Aaron called me back. And then we became friends and we're talking for about eight, six to eight months. I'd say it might, might've been more like six, um, before he accidentally put my name up on the screen and Scientology found me out and that made me a double agent. Uh, Kelly Curtis, you will get many new friends now that you are out. I hope that's true. And, uh, I really would like to make friends with somebody like sometimes when I'm out shopping at TJ's, I think this would be fun to do this with someone. If my mom were here, she would be the one, but she doesn't live here. Oh my God. My husband's in the chat. You guys look, everybody say hi to Jeff. You chubby squeezy little penguin. I can't wait to get a hold of it. I'm going to kiss. I'm going to squeeze. I'm going to do a lot of squeezing and massaging. I'm going to squeeze your butt. I like to tug on your hair. I like to feel your little goatee. Oh, I like to get in there. I like to get a hold of it. You guys look at this. I'm getting, I'm getting kind of into it as we talk to him. Isn't he cute? Oh, he's cute. Oh, I love him. You guys. Mm. Dang. He's like a little dusted pecan, just a sugary honey dusted pecan. Oh, I just love him. He's so cute. Yes, my family is far away and I only have kids and pets to keep me company. Yeah, same. I don't have any family here. Um, so that can make things hard. That can bring on the loneliness unless you have a Jeff and then you can just climb on his chubby, his chubby tummy and talk to him and He'll tell you stories. Beans Brown, I spent over 100000 on an MBA. And trust me, the fact that you have one curiosity and two humility puts you ahead of everyone I went to school with. Degrees don't mean anything without EQ. You have that. Thank you. That means a lot. Thank you. That's really sweet. Uh, are you two logged in from different rooms in the same hours? No, Jeff is not currently in the house right now. Otherwise, Jeff would probably pop on and say hi. 
the nurse who loved me. Oh my God. I'm here for how much <laughs> Reese loves Jeff. I'm crazy about Jeff. He is such a sweetheart, little chili bean. You know, he's got a little bit of spice, not mild, probably like a medium spice, but then there's some sweetness to it as well. It's like you put the sugar in the chili or however people sweeten their chili. That's how Jeff is. He's got a kick. It's a definite kick. There's some gusto, but it's a smooth, it's smooth as it goes down. That's how I would describe him. You understand, right? Gina Marie, we'd love to meet Jeff on camera. I'm going to bring him on camera. Tr trust me. He wants to. There he goes, heading to a scout campfire. Jeff is a uh, boy scout with, with Huxley. Huxley's a boy scout. Jeff's the scout master. Um, isn't he cute? He's going to a scout campfire. That's because he's zesty and he fits right in because he's spicy and he's near the fire and the fire knows it. But he's also marshmallowy. It's hard to describe, but it's toasty, warm center, but kind of a charred crust, but in a good way. You guys know what I mean. Lisa, Reese PR is on Sticky Sweet. Cute. Is Huxley a scout? Thank you, by the way, Lisa. Uh, Lori and George, is Huxley a scout? He is. He is a boy scout. Um, I love Jeff. Who doesn't love Jeff? You're crazy if you don't love Jeff. Again, polar bear qualities, but also like a penguin just with little flippers. Oh, my God, you guys. It's, I mean, really, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. He makes me all glowy. I still get gooseys and butterflies around him. I still do. He also has a really sexy voice. I kind of can't wait for you guys to know because he sounds just like Donald Sutherland. And as you know, I love old men. It's like a smoky voice. Oh, I love it. I like it when it's right up by my ear. Carrie says, what does your tattoo on your wrist say? So Fred, my husband who passed away, um, he wrote, he wrote cards to me all the time cause he was old and old school and I love cards and he would sign his cards. And this is Fred's handwriting, your number one admirer, Fred. That's how he would sign his cards. Not all of them, but most of them would say that your number one admirer. And I had to have that and, uh, I don't regret it. Somebody had a question about Fred. Oh, here we go. Renee B. Question, was Fred a committed Scientologist? Not at all. Fred was a Baptist and he knew nothing about Scientology. Um, Nikia, Nikia Stewart, haven't met him, but can tell he adores and supports you. He does. He does. Ooh, yeah. Sean Connery swoon. God, you guys, you know how I feel about the old ripe avocados, the old extra crispy chicken nuggets. I love them. Ooh, I love old men. We could go there every night if you want to. I'll talk about it all night. Casey, question, reality check. You are raising the best human on the planet. Casey, that's really nice of you to say. I doubt that that's true, but I hope that there is some truth to it. Oh yeah, Joanne. I didn't, I didn't touch on that. Jeff's like a good peach habanero salsa. He is, although Jeff and I don't like peaches. I would say it's more of a, um, you know, when you take a Ritz and you put cream cheese on it and then you put like a raspberry jalapeno jam, that's Jeff a hundred percent. He's sweet yet spicy. And you, all you want is more like the second you pop that Ritz in your mouth, you're like, holy shit, get your own jar. Cause I'm putting this on every single cracker. Well, I mean, that's how I live my life. I don't know how you guys do it, but I uh, pretty much take over. <laughs> One tough chick. How did the conversation turn to discussion of Jeff? I don't mind. Just curious because Jeff came into the chat and said hi to everybody. And then of course, the second Jeff comes in, we have to touch on how chubby he is and how cute he is and how squeezy and we like his butt and we like his voice. So that's how it happened. It just, it just tumbled from one thing to the next. Um, Joanne, both of my boys are Eagle Scouts, but it's been great for them. Yes. Huxley's working toward his Eagle Scout. He got his life-saving badge today, which is a must for Eagles. And, um, what did he get his water sports badge today? Let's see. Question from Renee B. What's, what is it a flap 
with the in-laws when you married an on-scientologist. Yes. Guys, a flap. Why does my hat look crooked? A flap in Scientology is a problem. So yes, um, it was a problem to marry Jeff because he was not a Scientologist. However, Jeff is extremely lovable and charismatic and everybody likes him. So my in-laws kind of gave him a pass because they also thought he was going to join the church. Um, he didn't give them that impression but they kind of assumed he would and I, we would all get him in. That never happened. Um, but yeah, it's a problem when you marry a non-Scientologist for sure. Uh, Denise Brown, do you have your furniture picked out for your new office? I have the chair um, and I have some color, some color schemes that I want to go with. Um, I have, I've narrowed down the desk to like two or three desks and I'm really excited about it and I need to get that on order. Um, because I cannot wait to move into my new office. I was down there cleaning today. Carol, not going to say that I like his butt, but love that you love Jeff's butt. Well, wait till you see it and then make that call. I mean, it's only fair, Carol. You may fall in love with it just like I did and do. Ooh, it's cute. Whenever we leave Costco, I like to let him go first so I can look at his butt. He does have a cute butt. Yeah, Jeff is really... He is so cute. I felt the same way about Fred. I just really feel, I lovey-dovey and dates and flirting is all where it's at for me. Matter of fact, Jeff, like once or twice a week, I will get upset with him and I'll be like, you need to dial up the flirt pronto. I'm not getting enough flirt from you. You might as well get the hell out. Like I like flirty flirt. And if I'm not going to get it from you, I'm going to go to Costco and I'm going to get it from the old man and the Navy hat buy the avocados because he's there waiting for me. I guarantee it. Jennifer Leach, you need to make an Amazon wish list. Let us help you. I feel weird about that. So a couple of people have said, Reese, you need to make an Amazon wish list and we'll help you get your office set up. You guys, I already feel weird with the super chats. Like, I don't know if it feels right to be like, here's my wish list. Buy me stuff. I mean, you guys give me your feedback on that. I just, this is a whole new world for me. I'm not having a baby, so it's not like a registry. I don't know. Give me your feedback. Give me your feedback. I will happily do it, but only if you guys want me to do it. I just don't feel right pushing that on people. Did I mess up the camera? Only the Lord knows. Oh, my God, yes. Avocado interloper. Yeah, I was there for it, too. God, he was so cute. I love old men. I love a flirty old man. You guys, I'll never forget. Fred was so flirty and he was so funny one day. I was getting ready for work and I was like, honey, what do you think? I was like, is this cute? Because my outfits were important to me and I just wanted to be very presentable. And I said, do you like these pants? And he went, he not didn't even miss, didn't even miss a, a second. And he winks and he goes, I like what's in them. I love it. I love flirty old men like that. Yes, yes, yes. Any day, any time. Talk about it. Get it going. Uh, Haga Haggis 66. I missed your PO box, dear Reese. Can you share it again? You know what? I think I can post in the comments in this. Can't I? See, I'm this retarded. I don't know how to do anything. But I think Aaron told me I can post in the comments. So I'm going to post the PO box in the comments. So give me a second. One, six, six, five, seven. Oh, I hate this kind of keyboard. Jeff has some weird keyboard. East 23rd. Oh, my back. Street. You know what? I got the P.O. box wrong last night. It's East 23rd Street South. Um, how do I? I'm going to have to do it all the way across. Let's see. East 23rd Street South box 289. This is going to be weird. How do I make it so that it goes down to another, so that it goes down? I can, ah, I can't. Can you put me a box on your about page, please? I don't know how to do that. So I'm just putting it in here. Independence, Missouri, 64055. There we go. Okay, you guys, I just put the P.O. box in there. Thank you. If you guys want to send me something, thank you. 
even if it's a card. Oh, Goldie did it too. Goldie, yeah, you got it right too, gal. Okay, thank you. Kelly Curtis, you should write a book. I think that would be great. I I think so too. Again, it it I feel a little bit um weird about it because of the not being so smart, but I think I could do it. I think I could do it. I'm starting to my confidence is coming up. Um Yes. Have Aaron teach you how to add things to your about page. Okay. I will. Aaron and I go over a couple of things a day, but as you guys know, he's like crazy with the videos and he's busy all the time. Um, so that's, yeah, but I will, I'm going to learn things. I swear. What scent is the candle in the background? Don't you want to know? Let me look. Citrus Grove, and it smells so good. I like the smell of orange, anything really. I love orange. Um, so yes, yes. Goldie, of course we can, babe. We can chat tomorrow. Aaron and I are going to do a live tomorrow, hopefully in the afternoon. He's going to let me know. So just let's email and talk about it. But yeah, I'm around. We can totally talk. I'm around in the morning. I don't know where you're located in your time zone, but yeah, um, for sure. We can definitely chat. Uh, where are the fur babies tonight, Kathy Ann? Good question. Gertie is behind me moping and sulking. Kid is cleaning her, uh, uh, tender bits, I'll say. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on. I don't know. They're, they're kind of not being very much my friend this evening, probably because they helped me clean the office all afternoon. They're just kind of over it. Um, is there anything else? I know. Gertie's upset. She's upset. Gertie accidentally bit me today. She was trying to bite her brother, Bo, and I reached my hand in between and she bit me and kind of broke the skin. And she's been very, very nervous and like shaking since, which is weird. It's not like I'm going to slap her for it. I didn't even yell at her for it, but she feels really guilty about it. So she almost wouldn't eat her dinner. That's how like weird and introverted she was. I felt terrible. Um, kid. Kid, do you want to come up here and say hello to people? She's just laying on the floor, just getting at it on her bits. Um, Pete in Toronto. Sorry, I'm late, Reese. My wee fuzzy gosling. Oh, my God, Pete. That's cute. I wanted to say that I love your videos, and I'm even getting used to your TMI. Pete, that's so sweet. You're late. You did miss about my uh, fallopian tubes and uterus, but everything's on the up and up. The cramps are improving. I know you wanted to know, so we'll just cover it again real quick. Everything's going pretty good as far as Shark Week this time. So thank you, Pete, for getting comfortable and used to it because we need you to be used to it and comfortable. Courtney Platt, thanks for taking a great deal of time messaging me today, Reese. Your encouragement has been on my mind all day. I love you. You're very welcome, and I enjoyed it as much as you did. And it encourages me and I just, this is why I'm doing this channel. Seriously. Question. How many pets do you have and who's cat, who's a cat and a dog? I have three total. Bo is a standard poodle. You don't see him very often because he's huge. Uh, and he just lays in front of my feet. Gertie is the little tiny, uh, baby thing that was, came from a magical forest or was born in a manger with the Lord. We're not sure yet. And then kid is my cat and she's a girl. Um, Goldie, same. God, that was a cute name. I'm sad that I didn't think of that. Good night, Susan. We love you. I'm going to be signing off too soon because I just feel like we've covered everything unless you guys have something you want answered or you want me to cover. Um, we can sign off. But I just wanted to go over the things and talk to you guys and, you know, do our nightly chat. Um, sometimes I do it in the afternoons. It just depends on the time. I kind of scheduled this later because I thought Aaron and I were doing something today and he ended up not being able to, which is fine. Um, so I was back on this evening. Um, but I really love you guys and you know, I care a lot about you. Um, thank you again for the super chats. I'm getting used to that. It's awkward for me that people want to give me money. I just think it's like over the top, nice and shocking. And I don't feel like I deserve it. So thank you. Thank you for you feeling like I deserve it. It means the world to me. Um, I love you guys and 
unless there's any other questions, let's see, we've been on for about an hour. Um, I will be back on tomorrow. And um, Tiff, thank you. We love your lives. We care about you. I know you do. And I feel it. And I know that you mean it. And I mean it. This is very real. And I love this. This is why it's addictive for me. Oh my God, go make your Amazon wish list. I don't even know how to do that. I'll try to figure something out. I have an Amazon account. What am I supposed to put on it? Just like office stuff? I guess. Um, Duchess Diana, you're so sweet. We're here for you. We love you too. I don't have money, but I can be an adopted mom if you would like. I never had a baby. That, that's so sweet. It means way more than any dollar amount. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry about the money. Like, I'm still shocked that you guys, what, I remember first watching Aaron and I, I thought that was like money that goes to charity. I had no idea Aaron made money doing this. I thought he was just, just because he didn't have any friends, honestly, because that's what I, that's why I do it. Um, Joni, thank you. Do what you want, Reese. We will help you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Bison, 5360. We care for you out here. So glad you got out. Stay strong. Thank you. That is so nice. The nurse who loved me. You're going to give Aaron a run for his money with your daily streams. I, I, we talked about this in advance. We, I do want to do daily streams and he was all for it. He was like, yes, do it. Do it, do it. Beans Brown, start with gifts that only inspire you. Books. Yeah, totally. I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, yeah, I do need a Mike Rinder bobblehead. Can I still get one of those? I don't know if they make them anymore. I'll have to ask Aaron that. I would love to have one in my new office. I hope Mike's doing okay. I think about him a lot. I really, really hope he's all right. I hope the treatment is helping. Lisa Marshbanks, uh, put things on your list that you want for your office. We love you, gooey little marshmallow. Thank you. All right. Okay. I will. Um, I will look on Amazon tonight at office stuff and I will see if I can create that. Um, and then I'll get with Goldie and see how you put it on here. I don't even, I almost didn't know how to put my own PO. Box. Um, so definitely, definitely you guys. Um, is there, I don't want to miss any questions. I don't have to leave this second, but is there anything that anybody wants answered before I go? Um, any snacks you guys want to talk about? like the truffle cheese. I hope some of you went to Whole Foods to get some truffle cheese. It is going to change your life and you're going to stay up and lose a little bit of sleep about it, thinking about it. You're going to wonder where your life's going after you try it and you're going to be looking at your future in a different way. I just want you to know. Um, yeah, Angela. I was thinking about Mike today too. I think about Mike a lot. I, I really just positive thoughts, guys. Positive thoughts. Ooh, you had Chipotle for dinner? Jelly. Oh, that sounds good. What's for dinner? Um, I had a vegan hot dog because I love those. And then I made a pan of roasted. One of my favorite things to do is I buy uh, the organic bag of broccoli at Costco and I roast it with olive oil and I do everything bagel seasoning on it and sometimes a little bit of smoked cheddar. Mm. Again, I don't know why I'm so chubby. I don't really eat that badly. It kind of bothers me. That's what I ate for dinner and it was so good. It also kind of helps you to poop better when you eat like that, which sometimes I don't poop right because I don't have a gallbladder. Garlic peppercorn cheese and olive oil at Costco. What? I've never heard of that. Where can I get me some truffle cheese? I get it from Whole Foods, Joni. Trader Joe's. I like Trader Joe's, but there's not one that close to me. And people are freaking obsessed who go to Trader Joe's. Um, I don't ever, I'm never that impressed. Like, sure, the cookie butter is good, but like, I don't know what's so good at Trader Joe's. I don't love frozen food. Like, I don't love eating frozen food. Tony Lynn, I'm obsessed with you, Reese, in an innocent, loving way. Not creepy. You crack me up. You're so genuine. Naturally funny and super duper sweet. Well, thank you, Tony Lynn. Even if it is creepy, I welcome that. Just don't murder me. But thank you for being obsessed. I don't have a problem with that. It's nice to have a fan. 
and a friend. That's just Diana question. Have you picked a style for your office? Um, I've, I'm looking at like some color palettes. I have the chair I think picked. And then I have like the desk narrowed down to two or three different desks. And then I have like different ideas for just decoration. You know what I really want, but I don't know if I don't know how to do it. I'd have to hire someone. I love wallpaper, like just wallpapering a wall, like for a pop. I really would like to wallpaper the wall behind me where I'm going to be. Um, yes, I would love an extra bobble if you want to give it to me or I'll buy it from you. I would love to have one. Yes, that would mean a lot to me, actually. Oh, my God, Kelly, that makes me want to cry. I don't have money right now. Taking care of my husband's stage four pancre pancreas cancer. You help my days and Aaron. I'm so sorry that you're taking care of him and I really, really hope the best. I'm sorry. That touches me. I understand. As you know, I lost my husband, so I totally understand and I'm sorry. And please don't worry about money. Please don't even have any attention on that at all because I certainly don't. I appreciate just talking with you guys. Relationships are what matters to me. So I'm sorry for that. Uh, everything bagel seasoning on veggies. Never thought of that. It's life-changing. It's life-changing. Denise L. Caught you live. Loving your chats. Thank you, Denise. My God. Thank you. You never poop right. I've not, I, ever since I had my gallbladder taken out, I don't really poop right either. Uh, oh, I love it's my Icelandic girl. What do you like on your pizza? Do not say pineapple. Hell no, I don't like pineapple on pizza. I like just plain. I like cheese or pepperoni. I don't eat a lot of meat, but I will. Like Jeff gets kind of that combo shit. I'll eat that. I like a Mexican pizza. Like, of course, you guys know I love Mexican. Um, that's what I, yeah, I'm pretty plain when it comes to, I do like pizza though. I also make a cauliflower pizza from scratch. It takes me like three hours and it is so good. It is so good. Joanne, do you have any hobbies, painting, knitting, photography? I don't. Being a Scientologist, we don't have hobbies. So uh, you guys right now coming on this chat, I would say is something that I really look forward to um, and, and lifts my spirits. So no, I don't have any hobbies, I would say. Uh, definitely eating and buying different kinds of cheeses to test out as a hobby, if you want to call it that. Um, yeah, isn't that a kind offer? The Mike Rinder bobblehead, I would love to have one. That's just Diana. Good, natural, white colors, glitz, old, new, modern. I see lots of stuff. Yeah. So I, like I said the other day, I like modern stuff, but I love like vintage also. So I like to have modern and then throw in like a pop of something old. Um, so I just kind of mix the two. That's been my style for a long time. Um, so I will go around places in Kansas City and like hunt for something vintage. And I love it. I love it. Amy Lopez, Reese, I'm so glad to see you can express sympathy and empathy so freely. We know this is such a no-no in church Scientology. Yeah, it is a no-no, and I never felt that way. I stood out for many reasons, for being too much of a joker, silly, and uh, yeah, I, I always showed too much emotion for being a Scientologist. You're not supposed to show emotion, and I have, a, I've, I've always been had a weakness for things and being sad. Mama Joe, Chili Relay knows, and I know I didn't say that right. Um, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Throw that on my plate. I'll totally put it away. Um, Melanie likes pineapple on pizza. It's a Canadian thing. I don't, I can't do it. And I don't eat ham or like Canadian bacon. So, um, I just can't do it. Oh yeah. Lori and George, have you had Minsky's tostada pizza? Yes, I have. And that's what I like to get when I go to Minsky's. I get my own little one. Huxley gets his own like pepperoni and then Jeff gets his own jumbo combo. And we all, I think we all just do that in a small, I love Minsky's, but I love their tostada pizza. I'm from Omaha. If you guys know Godfather's pizza. Oh my God. That was so good growing up. Um, cauliflower pizza recipe. Yeah, I will. It's really easy. The crust is 
two eggs, two cups of rice cauliflower, which I make in my own Vitamix. You can buy it that way, but I like to make it. Um, and two cups of mozzarella cheese. And then I add in a bunch of pizza seasoning and garlic to the crust. Um, I put that on parchment paper, bake at like 375 until it's brown. And then you just put your toppings on. I do like Whole Foods pizza sauce. Um, I like Romano cheese. So I put Romano cheese on and then any toppings, I do my own basil. Oh my God, it rocks my world. It's kind of sucks though. It's like telling someone how good a movie is and they're like, you talk it up and they're like, yeah, it was okay. I make that pizza and I am in love. It tastes like lasagna to me. Jeff and Huxley are like, thanks, hon. It's good. Okay. Bye. I don't understand. My ex-husband, Michael Huxley's dad, he loved it. Kind of pisses me off. I always make that pizza and it takes me so long. I'm like, why am I doing this? No one cares except me. Uh, I don't have, Andrew, do you have your lighting situation covered for your new office? Get some guidance from Aaron. Andrew, I didn't even know how to put my PO box in this chat. So definitely not. I don't know how to put air in a tire. So it, that would be a no, but I'll get some help. I will hire somebody if I have to, Andrew. That's that's just the problems that I experience in my daily life. Tell me about yours if you'd like. Let's see. Oh, Joni, Reese, your sweetie, send you love, sending you love, Huxley, and your burrito husband, Jeff. He is a burrito. Thank you, Joni. God, he's everything, isn't he? It's everything. He's not just a penguin or a polar bear, but he's also a baby giraffe, especially because he has long legs. But then he's also food, like a burrito, like you said. God, he's so good. He's such a little key lime tart, but he's also... um like a little tiramisu. Mm. I want to get a hold of it. I want to get in there. Don't get me started on Jeff again because I get the goosies. I get goosies all up and down my arm. Um, let's see. I, I got to catch up here. I was kind of behind. I'm sorry. Yes, Lisa, Godfather's cheese pizza. You guys, Godfather's pizza was amazing. Yes, T T N Treasure Finder. Godfather's was our hangout after football games. Well, I don't know anything about football because I was a Scientologist, but I do know about food. I snuck that in being a Scientologist. I was still a foodie. Oh, it was so good. I know I'm hungry too now, Susan. And I ate, I did eat dinner. Ha <laughs> ha, Angela, don't ask Aaron about the lights. Those are facts right there. Every time I'm with Aaron, you guys see him, he like runs off because his lights died. Dude, get some new lights. I'm going to tell him tomorrow. I don't know what kind of lights you think I'm going to need. Is it serious? Do I need an expert? Oh, fancy face. Thank you. You'll show me how to put air in my tire. I don't know how to do any of that shit. I don't know how to do anything. It's really kind of sad. I can change a light bulb. Um, what else can I do? I mean, I can do personal things. I know how to shave my legs and cooter. I don't know how to take care of myself. Otherwise, though, I would be screwed if I had to put air in a tire. I would probably just curl up and die until somebody came along, of course. And hopefully that person isn't Jeffrey Dahmer. Of course he's dead, but you know, the modern one, like one that hasn't been discovered yet. Um, yeah. Godfather's pizza is so good. So good. Goldie, you don't want to know how to put air in your own tires. I don't either. I have triple A for that. I mean, isn't that what it's for? I don't know how to do it. There's a lot of things I say, I don't know how to do. And it's like, learn. No, I don't want to. It's like saying I'm dumb and I don't didn't go to college. I'm not saying I want to go to college. I'm not smart enough to do so. I just want to complain about it. I just want you guys to listen, hear it out, sound it out, and just move on with your lives. You can cook. Cooking is a skill many people lack. I love to cook. I never knew how to cook until I quit my job in 2021 and stayed home, and I learned how to cook, and I followed all kinds of recipes, and um, oh, my God. I just love to cook. The nurse who loved me question, are you a coffee fan? What's your go-to order? Um, 
I'm a big chai tea fan. I drank coffee every day of my life since I was on staff at 13. I was in a meeting at Jeff's office March 5th of this year. I got sick drinking my coffee, probably not related, so sick that I had to go to an ER. Okay. Scientologists don't go to the fucking hospital. I hadn't been to a hospital since Huxley was ripped out of my guts um, and set on a table as one is, as one as that happens with a cesarean. I had to go to a hospital. I could not stop vomiting. I was, I probably threw up 200 times that day. I haven't had a coffee since. I can't do it. I don't know why the smell of it makes me sick now. And I've literally had coffee every single day of my child and adult life. Isn't that weird? I keep thinking, do I want to? Jeff is such a coffee snob and he orders all this fancy coffee and he grinds his own beans. Cause you know, Jeff is a little coffee bean in his own right. But we were coffee people and now I can't do it. I can't do it. Lori, that's smart. My dad wouldn't let me drive alone until I knew how to change a tire, made me take it off and put it back on. That's a good father right there. Yeah, I didn't have that. Um, yes, Courtney, AAA, nobody should live without it. We've used it many times and they're fast and it's wonderful. Um, but yeah, I don't know how to do it. Angela Chai. Yes, I love chais. Ooh, I love chais. Now, if I'm going to Starbucks, I will get, I love their chais, but I will get um, a caramel macchiato still. I do extra drizzle because it's, if I'm going to have diabetes, seems seems worth it to the, do the extra drizzle and mess around there, mess with my sugars. I know that's dangerous, but I live on the edge. I'm a, I was a Scientologist, guys. Um, let's see. Okay, these lights seem to be important. Beans Brown, show idea. List all things you don't know how to do, then research how many people your age in the U.S. don't know how to do that, then report back. Um, if I have that kind of time, I will. That's not a bad idea, actually. That's not a bad idea. Um, <laughs> thank you. You look cute in that hat. I have so many hats, you guys. I wear a lot of hats, fancy hats. I have a hat maker in Kansas City that makes me hats. Um, and I also have a lot of ball caps. I wear a lot of ball caps. So hopefully you guys won't mind because I do wear them a lot. This just happens to be the first time I'm wearing one. Um, but I was hoping you guys wouldn't mind because I do love hats. D car. I took over the farm operation after my husband passed away with a three and five year old. Oh my, had to try that to try for the kids. That's horrible. I'm really sorry. Wow. That's amazing though. Naomi, woo, lots of SP TV today. Had to get caught up and Reese is here chatting away without me. Sorry. I also feel like um, I'm boring you guys tonight. I don't, I didn't have as much of an agenda as I usually have my on my mind. Um, now I'm just catching up to answer questions. I feel like you're ready for me to leave, which is okay. I can always come back tomorrow. We can always do it another day. Doxy mom, 2020. Does Jeff cook? My husband does all the cooking. Jeff will cook. He loves to cook, but I don't let him cook because he is so messy in the kitchen. I cook as I go. I clean as I cook. I clean everything like one step at a time and I keep the everything cleared off the counter. Jeff is so messy, but he's cute and he knows how to cook. Like, I don't know how to make certain things like pancakes and shit. I don't know how to do that. He loves doing that. He likes breakfast. Um, and he likes to like make fancy old recipes because he's old, but I don't allow it very often because it drives me crazy that he doesn't like rinse the dishes. He just like sets shit and shit in the sink and I can't handle it. It gives me like anxiety. I'm like, honey, honey, honey. No, 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 no. But sometimes I let him. Sometimes I let him. What am I saying? Jeff does what he wants, but I mean, I prefer to be the one that cooks and he really likes my cooking. Jeff was married before me, obviously his children. And uh, he was married for 36 years and she did not do a lot of cooking. So he's very appreciative um, of my cooking. So I like that about us. Pam Abernathy, a hat maker. I'm so envious. Yes. Um, her name is Amina Hood. It's A-M as in Mary, I-N as in Nancy, A, Hood, H-O-O-D. Check out her website. She makes hats and she doesn't live too far from me. She's uh, making a hat for me right now. Actually, I picked one out for the fall and, um, you guys, this is so cute. So Jeff has 
almost never bought me a gift by surprise. Now he gifts things to me all the time. Jeff is extremely generous and he loves to give gifts, but he doesn't even take a chance because I'm so picky about fashion and accessories and putting things with things. And so he doesn't, yeah, ha haberdashery. Yeah, that's right. He doesn't uh, even take a chance at it, which I feel bad. I'm like, try, just give me the receipt so I can take it back. So for Christmas last year, he knows I'm friends with Amina Hood and he knows I love her hats. And Jeff also wears a lot of hats. He's a fancy man in hats. And um, he, every Christmas, I've never gotten a gift from him of something I didn't already know was coming. Either I went and picked it out and we bought it then, or I'll send him like a list of everything I want. And then you just pick off the list, whatever. But it's never been much of a surprise. Last year on our tree on Christmas morning, there's a card in the tree and I was like, oh my, what's this? So I open it and Goldie, oh my God, look at you. Dang, Goldie, you're good, girl. You're quick. She put Amina Hood's link in the thing. Anyway, I opened the card and it's this handwritten card from Jeff. And he says, um, please accept this card and get any hat you want made from Amina Hood. And I was like, holy shit. That was the first time Jeff's ever given me like an actual surprise gift well, I guess that I didn't want to return, but, um, I'm so excited about it. I had her make me a summer hat, which I did. And it's so cute. And then, um, she's now making me a winter, like a wool hat. And it's really going to be cool. And she, she, she makes the coolest bands. She customizes bands around the hats. It's really cool. It's all handmade stuff. I've been in her studio and I picked out a hat. The color is going to be like a kind of a blue, um, because I have black, I have gold, not gold, um, like a champagne. I have all the basic colors, but this is, I'm excited about it. If you guys look on my Facebook page, I usually have a lot of hats on in the winter, but I really love wearing hats and it needs to come back. Like nobody wears hats. We need to bring that back in our lives. I think women and men look so fancy and amazing in a hat. Yeah. Her hats are beautiful. Her hats are so neat. She did. She was busy kid. Did you want to come say hello? She was so busy for the Kentucky Derby. That's why she's still making my hat because uh, she had so many clients for the Kentucky Derby. Um, just finished watching Reese's first inter interview with Aaron was blubbering like a baby. Yeah, that was a pretty important interview and I'm glad that you watched it. If you guys haven't watched that, I do think you should watch it because it kind of, you can learn more about my background and like, the actual details of it all. Um, I pretty much pour it all out into that interview. So thank you for watching that. Haga Haga 66. You couldn't be boring if y'all had a handbook. That's so nice. Thank you. Thank you. Kid, do you want to make an appearance before we sign off girl? Finally, geez, you guys have been kind of standoffish this evening, guys. There she is in all her chubby glory. Um, but yeah, yeah, guys, you should check out her website. I mean, they're not cheap. We've talked about this. She and I, Amina hood. I mean, there, her material, her material is all very high end stuff that she orders and she's it. She hand makes it. I've been in her studio. She hand makes all of that stuff. It's all customized to your head measurements. It's amazing. Um, L. Jane Clifton Roselle. You need a tie-dye shirt? Really? I think I probably have one. I love tie-dye. Um, hmm. Aurora N. What a cutie. I'm so allergic to animals, but I love them. So I love seeing everyone's pets on live streams. Do other people have pets on their live streams? Oh, kid, you are so heavy. My God. Um, I don't know. I didn't know that. RTDMNA. That's what brought me here. I'm in Australia, so usually Miss Aaron's live. So this is nice. Oh, well, welcome. I'm glad you're here, babe. You should see if she'd sponsor a video. Interesting. Amina? Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, chubby kitty is right. Goldie, I didn't know that. Everybody has a pet on their stream. I Because I've not seen Aaron. I know he has a dog, but I've never seen his dog on. Oh, 
Aw, Z News homegirl. Sometimes people are nasty because they are jealous. You give them plenty to be jealous of. I don't think I do personally, but I'm. thank you for saying that. I don't have anything anybody would want to be jealous of. Trust me, I have, I don't have much, I don't bring much to the table. Um, but yeah, that probably is is also another another thing I should consider is that people do get envious or jealous. And, you know, that's that. I don't often feel jealous. I don't like, I don't look at other people and feel jealous. Sometimes if I see somebody trying to be flirty with my penguin in a hat, I get jealous, but no one really does that. And Jeff does not flirt like at all to the extreme. Like I told you guys, I actually will tell Jeff, like you better start dialing up the flirt around this house or uh, get the hell out of here. Um, as a matter of fact, when Jeff and I were dating, like, I kind of didn't think he liked me because he wouldn't flirt. I had to kiss him first. And that was weird for me. I've never, ever had to do that. Um, but Jeff told me later on, he said, I was crazy about you, but I was friends with Fred. And he said, I just didn't want to be disrespectful. Like, I didn't want to come on too strong. Jeff is very much a gentleman. He is very, very much a gentleman. Um, but yeah, now... He's, he's flirty because I make him. I'm like, you better be flirty. You need to be flirty. But he's not flirty with other women. Like Fred was a flirt. Anything with a cooter and he was a flirt. And I, I thought it was funny. But Jeff is not like that at all. Jeff is not flirty. I remember like leaving one of our, like our third date. And I was like, this guy is not into me. Like I'm really into him. Um... I really want to think about the bone phone, but he's just not thinking that way. And then I just, we clarified and that was it. The bone phone got answered pretty quickly after that. Carrie, love your courage to speak out and love that you come on with your fur babies. Well, thank you, Carrie. That's so nice. They like it too, I think. Yes, Michelle Kelly. I love that Jeff knew Fred. Oh my God, girl. I love it so much because we can talk about Fred all the time. I have quite a few pictures of Fred up around the house, like quite a few. And um, I have to, I, I look at him all the time. And that doesn't bother Jeff, of course. I have these tattoos, that doesn't bother Jeff. Um, and I love that we both knew him. And I love that Fred, Jeff and Fred knew each other way before I ever knew Fred. So that's kind of a beautiful thing for me because Jeff can share stories that I didn't know about. That's why I love talking to Fred's old friends because they'll tell me stories and I could just sit and listen all day. I cry every time, but I'm like, this is such a gift for me. Please go on about Fred. Anything you can tell me. Love it. Request, please can Gertie always make an appearance? I need her. You Yes. I will put that request in and see what her schedule looks like. Um, but I'll get back to you and see what she says. Um, you know, I have been asking her, she needs a summer bath. We do a bath, uh, seasonally. And it's weird. Every time I tell her that we need to do the bath, she says, I'd love to, but I have way too much on my schedule and I can't pencil it in. And, um, I wish that you had brought this up sooner, but I already worked in some new things. And it's just interesting that she never has time for that. Uh, my friend from Iceland, when you were in Scientology, how would you react to people being rude and make you feel uncomfortable? Just trying to understand the cult-like behavior. Well, that's what I was talking about earlier on the video. Um, I would react by shrinking. Um, when people, because in Scientology, there's a lot of screaming going on. There's a lot of that, a lot of throwing things, um, sometimes getting physical one-on-one -on -one with people. Um, you have to have very thick skin, I would say, to be in Scientology, and I never have. And that, look at Kate, are you leaving? so soon all right say goodbye chubby girl say goodbye oh my god you guys look at it look at it real quick get it up get it looking look at the tummy look at it bye baby love you kid um i would say in scientology most in order to be a successful scientologist you have to have really thick skin and you i know that tummy you have to um, be willing to, to fight. Um, I had to. I had to do that a lot. But it was never, ever something that was natural for me. So I would react by 
introverting and feeling very small. Um, and I was, that's why I kind of talked on this video about how to this day, when someone's rude to me, I take it very personally and I feel small. I kind of shrink. So I hope that answers your question. Daisy, remind me what the tattoos say on your arms. I heard you say it in another stream. It was sayings that Fred used to say to you, I'm rooting for you. And I can't remember the other one is, um, I'm on your side. He would always say, I'm rooting for you, kid, or just I'm rooting for you. And he would say, I'm on your side, honey. So he said that to me all the time. Um, so yeah, thanks for asking me that. I love talking about Fred. I am going to do a video just on Fred and like the whole background and to the end of, of our time together. Um, so I want to do that for sure and talk to you guys and share that with you because I feel close enough to you guys to share it. And honestly, I love talking about Fred. That's no secret. You guys know that. And that keeps things alive, I feel like. And I never want to change that. I always want to keep that alive. That's why it was so backwards for me when he died and they brought me into the church and had me do that loss of a person assist. And it was as if they were trying to get me to forget about Fred. That's how it felt because the commands to that assist are look around here and find something that doesn't remind you of Fred. Why would I want to find anything that doesn't remind me of Fred? Not to mention he had just passed away. Everything reminded me of Fred. There was nothing I could look around to find. So that was, that was kind of the final straw for me. Honestly, that was really hurtful. And, um, I don't know, felt kind of disrespectful to, to be honest, like trying to get me to forget that'll never happen. That will never happen. I love that man so much. And you guys know that. And I could talk about him on and on and on and on. And I love that too, because Jeff doesn't mind that. I, I bring up Fred every single day in our house. I will bring up something he said, um, just some funny little saying Fred once said to me, and I brought this up the other day, just, just to be silly. I said, Fred, we're going to go. My mom was in town and I said, do you want to come with us? Do you want to tag along or do you want to stay home? You guys want to know what he answered me? It was the cutest thing. I'd never heard it. He goes, call me banana. I'm one of the bunch. <laughs> I thought that was so cute. That's why I like old men. They have the cutest sayings too, along with the flirtiness. Ah, Lori, it shows what an awesome man Jeff is that he's not threatened and you are still in love with Fred makes us love Jeff. Yes. That is one of the biggest things I love about Jeff is like I said, if I get to talking about Fred too much, Jeff will start crying. Jeff will say, I really miss Fred and he will cry. And that is so heart, such a big heart to me from, from Jeff. I can feel that off of him and it's so authentic. And I love that. I just love that we can share Fred together and it's such, such a wonderful thing. We are here for you, sweetie, when you are ready to talk about that wonderful man. Thank you. And I do talk about him every day, but I, I would like to share a video of just about Fred and how we met. Uh, Courtney Platt, my best friend lost her husband, soulmate in March. She and their kids are so lost without him. I cry for her all the time. I bet you do. I have such a hard time with stories like that. It's so sad to me. Death is very sad. It's, it's inevitable. You guys, we all know that it's, uh, it's going to happen, but it is so sad when you have to say goodbye to somebody. It is so hard and it never really gets easier for me. It's easier because I can talk about Fred without breaking down, but I miss that man so much. I miss him playing the piano, sitting next to him. We would hold hands when we went to bed at night. We held hands in our sleep. I miss that so much. I felt so much love coming off of him all the time. I still feel it. It's just in a different way, but I do truly feel it. I'm not making it up. I feel it. What is this question, Renee B? Would you go on with the never ends? Oh, Denver, Steve, Clearwater, Chad, and or Maryland. We're a very warm, accepting group. Would I go on like, like do an interview with? Of course I would. I don't, I don't know what that, I mean, of course, just because somebody wasn't in Scientology doesn't mean 
we can't do an interview. Of course we could. I, I'm not a hundred percent on this channel just to talk about Scientology. I definitely am here to talk about it, but there's so many other things in life. And I want to hear about you guys and your stories and, um, a hundred percent, babe. Yes, Renee, we definitely could do that. Pam, so good that Huxley knows his dad is still loved and present. Yes, very much. Huh. Oh, that's sweet of you to say. The nurse who loved me, 89. I'm going to cry about Fred in a minute, too. That's amazing to hear what you guys were like. It was the most wonderful love story. It was like a fairy tale. I'm serious. I can't think of anything bad. It was just pure love. He lifted me up the second I met him, and I was in a bad place in Scientology then, and he just made me feel so secure and wrapped up and loved. It's so true. One Tough Chick 78. Endings are very hard. Yes, they are. I miss my dad very much. I loved him so much. I got to the place in my life where we were friends. Beautiful. We talked about everything. That's all I ever wanted from my dad. I'm so jealous that you got to have that with him. What a gift. I'm sorry he's gone, but what a gift. I always, I can't even watch a lot of movies because like if the dad and the daughter are like super close and that's how it was supposed to be, I get really choked up about it because I'm like, I wanted that so bad my whole life. Naomi Hales is Fred Huxley's dad. No, 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 guys. Fred is not. Fred was my second husband. Uh, Michael is Huxley's dad, and Michael is still alive. Um, so no, he was not. I'm curious about this um, doing a live with somebody. Yeah, I would totally love to do that. Joni, what you and Fred have had is amazing. I miss my dad too. Totally. Yeah. It's hard for me to get too sad or like mopey because what I had with Fred is like, I'll be high on that for the rest of my life. You could never bring me down. I love what I had with that man. The nurse who loved me. Do you have photos of you and Fred posted online? I'd love to see you guys together. For sure. Oh, yeah. Lots of pictures of me and Fred on um, Facebook. I post pictures pretty pretty regularly. And I'll just say something like how much I miss him or, um, I mean, Fred was a lot older, so you should, he'll stand out. Fred was quite a bit older, which like I said, I'm really, really into the olds mm. every time, every time Jeff and I go somewhere and like an old man comes by with a walker or a cane and he's flirty. Jeff's like squeezes my hand tighter or he'll be like, Oh boy, here it goes. I'm going to lose her. I'm going to lose her to this 90 year old it's kind of true. I have a thing for old men. As a matter of fact, I think we should do a video on that. Oh, Goldie, that's fine. Babe, do what you have to do if you have to go. Please, night, night, love you. Probably talk to you tomorrow. I think we should do a video on that sometime. I'm gonna, I will sign off. We're getting, it's getting late. Everybody's tired. Um, but I think we should do a video on my obsession with old men and see if we can crack that and figure out why. Not that I want it to stop. That'll never stop. But like, it is weird and I get judged hardcore for it. Um, yeah, Naomi, uh, 17 years between me and my hubby. Yeah, Jeff's 27 years older than me. Um, a lot of people judge for that. A lot of people think that I loved Fred or I love Jeff for the wrong reasons, like people who don't know me. I've been told that people think that I'm a gold digger or it's about the money, you know, or things entirely false, entirely. There's no truth to that whatsoever. I truly love these men and anybody who knows me knows that. I don't feel like I have to defend that, but, um, yeah, I just, anyway, we'll do a video on that sometime guys. Everybody's, everybody's tired. People's phones are dying. Um, that's okay. I will, I will sign off. I think I'm going to go pop some more truffle cheese and check on Gert because I know she's still upset and uh, really sensitive about today's, today's occurrence. Um, I love you guys. Thank you for listening and staying with me. I hope that it wasn't boring for you tonight. It was kind of more low-key. Um, 
but I enjoyed it. And I really loved listening to you guys and you listening to me. So thank you. I love you all. I'm sure I'll hear from you guys uh, on private message, but I will uh, definitely answer you on that too. Love you guys. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.